Well, Dave, it's good, good to see you again. Um, just give us a little resume of, of how things have developed over the winter. I was thinking about you know some of the players who were injured at the end of last season, sure. where everybody's gone. So I guess everybody's sort of getting scattered far and wide. They are. It's a difficult thing with county cricket. You want to keep your team together as much as you can and do loads of winter training to really understand where people are. But it's not always that easy. You know, I think players. It's really important that players do go abroad and go and experience different conditions, learn to stand on their own two feet, and go and play in the leagues abroad. So a number of our players are playing in Australia. Um, we've obviously got Luke Wright who's just gone out to join his Big Bash team. Uh, he's playing in that competition quite soon. Chris Jordan's been out in the West Indies honing his skills to go and play for Adelaide in the Big Bash as well. So um, scattered sort of far and wide if you like, but uh, we've had a group of players at Hove as well. We've had five or six at Hove who are either doing rehab or doing the fitness program. So it's going really well, but um, as you rightly say, it's not that easy to get all the players in one place at one time. I suppose we'll start with the skipper because he's, he struggled last year yeah. with, a, with a back injury and a wrist injury, but I saw him, he made 100 out in New Zealand the other day. So is Luke now back to, to full 100% fitness? He is. I spoke to him this morning, in fact, and he said he pulled up really, really well after his 100. So that's really encouraging for him and obviously for us. So. Um, Yes, it was a difficult season for the captain last season. He was injured a lot of the time. He hurt his wrist and then he hurt his forearm because he was compensating for a bad wrist. So um, to have Luke get 100 and, and, and according to um, his coach, um, his big back coach, he played particularly well. So it's really, really nice to see that and very, very encouraging for Luke and as I say, for us as well. Let's talk about some of the other players who finished the season injured, uh, some of the younger players. Particularly Matt Machin had a wrist injury as well. How, how's he getting on? And, and Ollie Robinson as well. Matt's actually struggling at the moment, to be fair. Um, He's, he's, he's tried everything, um, he had surgery right at the end of the season, it hasn't done that much for his wrist. So uh, Matt at the moment, we're unclear, We've, we're doing a couple more tests and Paul the physio is, 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 is on the case with Machen. We should know by next Monday what the prognosis is and, and where Matt is. So that's, that's, that's a slight concern for us. Um, his wrist isn't getting much better but we'll see how that progresses in the next couple of weeks. Did that mean more surgery, Mark? Or? No, no, I don't think they'd do any surgery. Um, it, 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 it could be uh, something else. So they're going to do a couple more tests. I know he's seen a rheumatologist as well. So they want to actually get to the bottom of this and make sure that we can diagnose it firstly and then um, see what the prognosis is moving forward. Um, Ollie Robinson. Ollie's had surgery on his shins. Um, he, he had them the pressure release off his shins. And by all accounts, it's gone really well. Ollie's back sort of on his feet again, which is good. So um, by January, should be running. Um, and then hopefully he'll be able to train pain-free. And that's obviously been the objective with Ollie. It's been a tough road for him the last two seasons. He has just been unable to train in the winters because his shins have been too sore. So they decided to go down the surgery route and hopefully that's going to work well. And, and, and I'm really encouraged by everything we've seen. And hopefully Ollie will be full, uh, fully fit by April when the season starts. But obviously in January he's got a lot of hard work to do. Uh, Harry Finch broke his thumb sort yeah. of middle, just when he was getting into good form Certainly as well. Time. But I, I get he's had in Australia with some of the other guys. T tell us about that, Mark. Finch, firstly, his, his, um, his thumb has recovered, so he's fine and he's playing again. So he's playing in the leagues in Australia. We've got Finchie, um, Phil Salt and Luke Wells all in Sydney playing in the league. So that's been really good. Um, we've also hooked them up with Trent Woodhill, who's, who's, who's a very um, established batting coach in Australia. So he's done a lot of work with uh, Luke in the Big Bash for his Melbourne Stars team. He's also worked in the IPL. Um, and he's obviously been attached to a lot of high profile batters, um, David Warren, etc. So he's a very established batting coach. So, lucky enough, we've set up a relationship with Trent, and Trent is looking after our batters in Sydney, which is really good for us. So he does the work in the week, and then obviously they play on the weekend, so it works really well for us. Terrific. Um, a couple of other players who I know go away, perhaps in the new year, about Chris Nash and Ben Brown, are they, are they off to South Africa this winter? Nash is going back to work with, uh, with Gary Kirsten in January again, because that obviously worked really well for him. Um, he's currently doing his fitness work, so he's getting there, and then he's going to join Gary in the new year. Ben Brown is going to do some work with Matt Pryor on his wicket keeping in January, and then he's going to go out and join Trent Woodhill in Sydney as well. So we're trying to get our players um, to, to, to experience different sort of coaching um, environments, if you like, and we try to get them in touch with different people to obviously enhance their skill. That'll make listeners ears prick up. Um, Matt Pryor's on the back. Is that in a coaching way? How's that working out? He's going to help him. He's going to help Matt, uh, uh, Ben, obviously, with his keeping. So Is that going to be at Hove? It'll be at Hove. So he's going to, hopefully, um, we're going to get him uh, a number of sessions in January to work with Matt because he's a fantastic, uh, obviously, a fantastic, fantastic player and a very, very fine keeper. So it's great to have Matt come back in that capacity to help Ben out. So, um, you know, I think as many of 
of those sort of sessions we can get together, I think is really important for us and obviously important for Ben as well. Um, just coming back to sort of finishing up on injuries and who's around and who isn't around, anyone else who's sort of struggling with injuries or you're monitoring at the moment, Mark? Uh, Stu Wessingham had a minor um, operation in his back two weeks ago, so he's come through really well. Uh, it'll, it'll take a bit of time. He had a couple of disc issues, so um, he's, he's had the surgery, um, and I think by January he'll once again he'll be weight weight bearing and loading um, loading up again and getting himself fit. So that was a good thing to get out the way as well. Um, so yes, there have been a few niggles, but it's the challenge that we've had, and and, and hopefully by the time the season come, comes, everybody's going to be in good shape. And lots of good news coming out in terms of some of these younger players, not least this week with uh, uh, Jofra Archer signing an extended contract. Fantastic. I mean, as I said in the press release, I think he's a very very exciting prospect as everybody can see. Um, he's somebody that, uh, that I believe is going to do great things in the future. He's having his first winter training here with us this winter, so he's still here. I think he's feeling the cold a little bit. He's not, um, not quite used to the cold. He's used to being in Barbados at this time of year, but um, he's putting the work in. He's committed. Um, and our strength and conditioning coach, Connor, who's taken over from uh, Nick Lee, he's doing a great job at the moment. So he's getting the guys to buy in. They're doing, they're doing different sports to get fit. They're doing a bit of boxing. They're um, doing sort of multi-dimensional fitness uh, work, which is really good for us, and, and, and I think by April we'll be in great shape. Uh, where are the club with Ed Joyce at the moment, Mark? Um, we, we basically, there are a number of things that we have to have to address there, and we have to make sure we get it right for ourselves and for Ed as well. So we, I talk to Ed sort of every week really, so we, we, we're in touch and we'll, we'll know a little bit more by, probably by Christmas time, exactly what the form is there, but there's no rush there. I mean, I think Ed's obviously had a knee operation, he's, he's recovering from that, and apparently that went really well. Um, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it progresses in the next few weeks. Um, off the field, you've got you've got your coaching stuff. There was much talk last year about additional batting coaches yeah. or other coaching stuff. What can you tell us about that going forward, Mark? Well, at the moment we've we've, we've uh, employed Michael Yardy to coach through the the youth system. So he's doing a lot of coaching work in the academy, the under seventeen stuff as well. So it's great to have Yards on board from that perspective. So he's doing a lot of work. <coughs> excuse me, through the age groups. Um, so to have ex-players come back and, and, and commit to us in that way is great. You know, and, and Yards, obviously, the feedback we've had from all the work he's been doing with the young bats has been outstanding. So Michael is somebody who I think is very, very keen to get back into coaching. And at the moment, in the role he's doing, he's doing fantastically well. Going forward, is that a role that might go into working with the first team as well? Is there any sort of news on maybe there was talk about a batting coach last year? Is that anything that might be on the horizon? Well, we'll see. We'll see how it develops. We haven't committed to anything yet, but we'll, we'll certainly see how, see how that develops. Um, the new fixtures are out. Um, you've spoken there about the way that the season's going to change this year. There are all sorts of you know, peculiarities in here. Day-night fixtures, for example. I know, exciting, so, exciting. We've got to embrace it. You know, I think it's been a success in Australia. Apparently the, the, uh, the day-night there went really well and, and a lot of the players were quite positive about the format. So I think we have to be positive. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that ECB have brought in. and We'll certainly play a game here. I think it's against Gloucester. We play here at Hove, so it's very exciting. We're breaking new ground. We're going to play a little bit of day-night cricket and see how that goes. Um, I've got to ask you as well a couple of other things this week that have come out. This, this suggestion of red cards being introduced yeah. into cricket. Mark, what, what do you make of that? Nothing, nothing yet. I'm still trying to sort of reflect and think about that, so I'm not going to comment on that at the moment. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the general thing <coughs> seemed to be that it might, yeah. might be more sort of aimed at recreational cricket yeah. rather than yeah. sort of perhaps for acts of sledging or whatever okay. on the field. I think probably as a general, you probably get less sledging the more you go up in cricket. I would have thought that sort of the higher level, you probably get less sledging. There's not a lot of sledging that goes on in our our first house cricket, that's for sure, or well, not that I'm aware of. Um, and, and you probably get a bit of sledging in, in uh, club cricket occasion and stuff. But, you know, it's been part of the game for a long time. You know, I don't see there being a huge problem in that. Um, the month slipped by pretty quickly. It'll soon be Christmas, it'll soon be the new year. Um, what, what will be sort of the training procedure for the players once you get some of these players back from overseas? Mark, when does everyone sort of gather back here at home and really begin preparation in earnest? We're back on the 13th of March, is officially our day back. So um, we, because we're not going away on pre-season this season, this year or next year at least, we've got a good month before we play the universities. So that's our first game of the season, the universities game on the 7th of April. And then the following week we start our, our fixture here against Kent at home. So we've got a month to do a bit of work, you know, weather permitting, it's not that straightforward as you know in March, um, to get outdoors. But having chatted to the groundsmen who are uh, very, very accommodating, they're going to try and get us out on grass as soon as they can. So we'll be out on grass as soon as we can. Um, we'll do a little bit of team building in the first week or so we're back and we'll take it from there. But I'm, I'm incredibly encouraged. I think we, 
we're building something really special here, and I'm and I'm really really excited about the new year. And what about yourself? It was a long season last year. Do you yeah. get a chance to actually sort of recharge your batteries at the end of the season? I mean, you look very refreshed. Very much so. I went I went to South Africa for three weeks with my family, so that was great. I don't know how you get refreshed with a seven-year-old running around, but but I tried. No, it was great fun, and I'm, I'm once again I'm incredibly engaged, and and I feel that um, last year was a learning curve for both me and the team really. We're trying to establish something really special to move forward and I feel we're going in the right direction, so I'm really encouraged. Final question, um, talk about the test match today. Good, yeah. good to see a, a, a young player who's come through the county championship racks you know, into the England side and making a 100 old debut. I mean, how good a knock, how good is that for the game with Keaton Jennings today? Very good, he played particularly well. I watched a lot of it actually, I watched it up in the office, so it was nice to see it. And it was nice that county cricket got a bit of um, credit for it as well, because I do think it's a very, very strong league. And, the first division as well as the second division, division is a very strong league so it's nice to see players coming through and getting a 100 on debut so uh, very encouraging for our game and obviously very encouraging for England. Wonderful Mark, thanks very much, Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. And uh, let's hope 2017 is a successful one. Thank you so much.